Ever wondered how TV broadcasting deals shape the fortunes of football leagues? In a tale of two freshly inked deals, the EFL is celebrating, while in France, League One faces a sobering reality. Join me as we dive into the high-stakes world of football finance, where off-pitch drama rivals the excitement on the field. We'll be diving into how these deals could impact teams across both leagues, from the top contenders to those fighting relegation. Not only that, we'll turn back the clocks to revisit a pivotal moment in football history when the EFL grappled with its own TV rights crisis, a cautionary tale seemingly ignored by the French League. Will football repeat past mistakes, or has the sport learned from its history? The EFL has just announced a groundbreaking international deal in the US, with CBS taking over the reins from ESPN. But that's not all. This is part of a massive overhaul of their entire broadcasting strategy, both domestically and internationally. But how big an impact will these bumper new deals have? Before we tackle that, let's rewind and look at how the EFL's financial picture has evolved. The EFL's direct revenues have doubled to over 200 million in the last 10 years. And why are TV rights deals so important? Because broadcasting is the biggest chunk, bringing in 75% of all revenues the EFL makes itself. How does that break down? 120 million a year from the domestic Sky deal and 30 million from international rights. But how much of this actually reaches the clubs? Whilst the EFL covers the Championship, League One and League Two, we'll zoom in on the Championship, the second tier of English football. Why? It gets the lion's share of the money and we've got better financial data to work with. In 2023, Championship clubs raked in a total of 750 million but the EFL itself wasn't their biggest revenue source. That's right, it's the Premier League, pumping almost 300 million into championship coffers. Most of this comes as parachute payments for recently relegated clubs, with a 5 million solidarity payment for all other teams. And the EFL itself? They're contributing 111 million. The rest of the pie is split between matchday income and other commercial revenues, totaling around 350 million. That means, 40% of championship revenue comes from the Premier League, only 15% comes from the EFL, and combined, TV and league distributions make up more than half of all revenue. If we exclude those teams with cushy parachute payments, then the EFL share jumps to 20%. But despite all this cash flowing in, almost every championship club is operating at a loss. The average? 12 million in the red. Now let's fast forward to the upcoming season. How much will these new deals shake things up? International rights are being handled by relevant sports in the US and pitch for the rest of the world. Together, they've guaranteed at least 148 million over the next four seasons. That's a minimum of 37 million a year. However, if the reported 40% boost in US rights applies to all territories, we could be looking at 42 million annually. But the real game changer? The enhanced domestic deal with Sky. The pay TV juggernaut has upped their order from 138 to over a thousand games for the next five years, with a total deal value of 895 million. That means domestic broadcasting revenues will jump to 179 million a year. Add it all up, and next season could bring in a staggering 221 million in broadcasting revenues, nearly a 50% increase. So how much will clubs themselves benefit? Assuming the extra cash is distributed in the same way, each championship club could roughly see an extra 2 million in their coffers a year. Not shabby at all. And if, but that's a big if, the teams don't immediately splash the cash, it would improve the average bottom line to a 10.5 million loss. But let's be real, in a division where many are chasing the Premier League promised land, how likely is it that this extra income won't go straight into the transfer kitty? Either way, more cash is a good result for teams in the EFL. So why isn't French football celebrating in the same way? It's just six weeks before the new season kicks off and French football has only just sorted out their broadcasting. The league has finally inked a new domestic TV rights deal with The Zone and Be In. But hold your applause, this isn't a cause for celebration. In fact, it's being hailed as a last ditch effort to stave off a looming financial crisis. This new deal is reportedly the lowest in two decades, but just how bad is it really? Let's dive in and find out. The combined revenues of all clubs have soared to a whopping 2.4 billion euros. But here's where it gets interesting. 
peek behind the curtain and the picture isn't as pretty. Domestic broadcasting revenues for league art clubs hit their peak back in 2019. Since then, it's been all downhill. By 2023, they had dropped to 505 million. But how do we get here? For that, we need to rewind to 2018. French football was riding high, having just secured a massive new TV deal for the 2020-21 season. The Spanish media company, Media Pro, had swooped in, offering a jaw-dropping 780 million euros a year for Liga, a 60% increase over the previous contract. Adding Canal Plus's smaller package of 332 million a year and BN's international deal, and Ligue 1 was looking at a windfall of 1.2 billion annually. But what happened next? Did this financial boom translate into on-field success? Spoiler alert, things went south and fast. Just four months into the new contract, the deal collapsed. The pandemic had hit and the economics simply didn't add up. What followed was a scramble to salvage the situation. Amazon stepped in to take over Media Pro's rights with a fire sale deal of 250 million euros, plummeting the rights values to under 700 million. So how has this left the teams? First, there's the PSG factor. The Parisian giants account for over a third of all revenues, more than the smallest 14 clubs combined. And when it comes to TV rights dependency, for top dogs like PSG, domestic TV rights make up just 8% of revenue. But for smaller clubs, it's over a third of their income. So you can imagine who felt the pinch more when these rights deals collapsed. But combined revenues have been on the up, despite the decline of domestic broadcasting. A lot of that has to do with other income that has jumped to over 300 million in the year. As well as receiving domestic revenues and the UEFA TV money for some, another pandemic deal is currently easing the financial burden. In the fallout of that media pro collapse, in addition to government support in securing funds, the LFP sold a 13% stake in the league to private equity firm CVC for 1.5 billion euros. The cash injection was meant to ease the pain with 1.1 billion to be distributed to clubs over three years. Reports vary, but the first tranche received in 2023 was around 40%, with over 400 million boosting the club's top lines, though again, the big boys are receiving the lion's share. But is this a long-term solution or just kicking the can down the road? Stick a pin in that as we fast forward to today. Despite ambitious targets of 1 billion for domestic rights and 200 million internationally, the reality has fallen far short. Canal Plus, still sore over the cut price Amazon deal in the previous cycle, refused to submit a bid, and Amazon themselves indicated they would not renew their deal. The result? The Zone stepped in with a 400 million annual deal. The Inn added 100 million for one primetime game each week. International rights remain unclear, but let's assume they stayed at 80 million a year. Total let up, and we're looking at 580 million. But don't forget that deal with CVC. They're entitled to 13% of this new deal, leaving the league just over 500 million euros. A 12% drop from the previous deal, and less than half of what they were promised in those heady media pro days. So how ominous does this look? League arm clubs are facing a one-two punch this coming season. The TV rights reduction could slash broadcasting revenues by over 120 million euros. And assuming CVC payments taper off to 30% over the next two years, that's another 100 million gone. We're talking about a potential 200 million revenue hit, nearly 10% of the league's total revenues. And what about in three years' time, when the CVC distributions end completely? That's another 325 million euros gone. If not mitigated, we could be looking at widespread losses, with smaller clubs with shallower pockets particularly vulnerable. Just look at Bordeaux. Once a top flight mainstay, financial strife has this week meant they've accepted administrative relegation to the third tier of French football. But haven't we heard this story before? A football league foregoing a long-standing broadcasting partnership, happy to hand over the keys to an exciting new player promising a new level of TV rights riches, only for it to end in financial collapse with the clubs involved rocked by instability for years to come. If this story sounds familiar, on ITV Digital, the new home of men's football. You've been paying attention. Cast your mind back to the turn of the millennium and the English Football League's ill-fated deal with ITV Digital. 
In 2000, ITV Digital, then called On Digital, burst onto the scene, quadrupling the Football League's previous deal with Sky, with a bumper 315 million three-year deal. Sound familiar? But by 2002, and after terminating the deal one year in, ITV Digital had collapsed, leaving the EFL high and dry and still owed 180 million. The fallout was severe. Sky swooped in with a cut price deal of 95 million over four years, less than what they paid for their previous deal. The long-term devaluation of the league's TV rights took over a decade to fully rebuild. And most desperate of all, 12 clubs went into administration, a worrying omen for French clubs. So while the outlook for French football may look ominous, Perhaps the crisis and rebirth of the EFL can show that even if it takes decades, the resilience of football may just win out in the end. And for a deeper dive into the financial state of the championship, make sure you check out this video here. But until next time, we're out.